we are in uh, lecture 2 of chapter carbon and its compounds carbon and its compounds so in previous lecture we have discussed a few things so first let us uh, go with the revision what we have discussed in previous uh, lecture so we have discussed that carbon is element which will be present in almost every substance and as carbon is so special because of uh, two properties one is tetravalency second one is catenation which we are going to see today and carbon belongs to second row second period and 14th group that period or row represents orbit so that carbon has two orbits 14th group it represents valency carbon has four valency and carbon it is represented with the letter c atomic number 6 mass number 12 and six proton six neutron six electrons will be present if you write electronic configuration of carbon it is 1s2 2s2 2p2 means in first orbit it has two electrons in second orbit it has four electrons total six electrons then its valency is four and it has valency electrons too and then we have discussed atomic structure of carbon and electron dot structure of carbon in atomic structure we will be representing nucleus orbits as well as electrons in electron dot structure we will be representing symbol valency and then valency electrons not valency valency electrons we will represent then carbon it can combine with other elements why to become stable how it will become stable basically what is meant by bond everything we are going to see in this lecture so in this lecture our main aim learning outcomes in this lecture first we are going to see what is meant by bond why elements will become bond why you can observe bond why we can observe bond between two elements then what are the types of bond if you observe in uh, third chapter metals and non metals in metals and non metals chapter we have discussed about ionic bond and in this fourth chapter carbon and its compounds chapter we are going to discuss about covalent bond so what is the difference between ionic bond covalent bond we will try to observe then we will try to see what is meant by single bond double bond as well as triple bond with examples then we will see how carbon will be reacting with other elements so these are the learning outcomes of this lecture so first you see already we have discussed about the periodic table if you observe periodic table there will be 18th group elements 18th group elements are helium neon argon krypton xenon and radon here we need to know atomic numbers at least up to krypton helium atomic number is 2 neon atomic number is 10 argon atomic number is 18 krypton atomic number is 36 now whatever atom you take you need to compare this atom with stability numbers you need to compare now we are we need to speak only regarding carbon we don't want any other element so let us discuss about carbon let us discuss only about carbon now you see carbon atomic number six if you write electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p2 while coming to valency electrons 2s2 2p2 that is nothing but four valency electrons now you see atomic number is six we need to compare that atomic number with these numbers means we need nearest stability number nearest stability element we need if you observe six it will be in between two and ten and if you see difference between six and two it is four if you see difference between six and ten of course this is four means 
what we will be thinking carbon to become stable. So by this information, we can get uh, carbon to become stable. You see its atomic number is six. Either it has to become two or it has to become 10 carbon. Either it has to become helium two or it has to become neon 10 to become To become helium, that carbon has to lose four electrons or to become stable, carbon needs to gain four electrons. So we'll try to understand what will happen, whether it will, uh, whether it will lose electron or gain electron, what would happen that we are going to see now. Now, okay, you see carbon, it's nucleus with uh, six protons and six neutrons, then it has first orbit, then it has second orbit. And if you observe, in first orbit, of course, we know there are two electrons. In second orbit, of course, we know there are four electrons. Total four plus two, it is six electrons. Now, you see, first let us see this condition, losing two electrons, I mean four electrons. Guys, it is not that much easy to remove electron from the atom. Of course, we can apply some energy, we can apply some friction, we can give some external energy to it to remove electron. But from the lower mass atom, lower mass, just 26 atomic number and 12 is the mass number. From lower mass atom, it is not that much easy to remove electron. Now, to remove electron, we need to supply some energy. Okay, let, uh, let us think that we have given some external energy to it so that this electron can be removed. This electron, let us remove. Okay, first of all, before removing electrons, carbon atomic number is six. It got six electrons. It got six protons. It got six neutrons. Now, now you have given some energy to it to remove electron. Now, you have removed one electron. After removing electron, now electron count has become five but proton count, neutron count, there is no change, remember. Now, okay, after removing one electron, we have given uh, more energy to it to remove another electron. Now, after removing two electrons, electron count has become four now. Electron Because six minus two, that is four now, here it is minus one, here minus two. Six minus three is four. Is there any change in proton count or neutron count in the sense, no change. It has six protons and six neutrons as usual. Now you see, protons are more stable, more strong, more potential than electrons. So in eighth class, we have discussed the strength of one proton is equal to 1837 electron strength. Proton has huge strength to, to attract electrons. Now what will happen? There are six protons in nucleus and six neutrons in nucleus where it has only four electrons in its orbit. Now protons and neutrons, that proton will have huge nuclear charge. That nucleus will show huge nuclear charge. And because of less count of electrons, this these four electrons will be attracted towards the nucleus. These four electrons will be attracted towards the nucleus. And we can see different, different changes in the atom like shrinking of the orbit. And if there is shrink in the orbit, electron velocity becomes so huge. Sometimes there will be unstable atom become unstable and again if you are using some energy because you need to make two electrons right six electrons should become two electrons because it has to match helium ato atomic number electronic configuration okay you have used still more energy to remove third electron also if you have removed three electrons there will be only three electrons left and six protons and six neutrons now these six protons will be attracting that electrons with a greater force than all these three electrons will go and fall in the nucleus. If all electrons are falling in the nucleus, then automatically atom would be collapsed. So from this information, we can get like, it is not at all possible to lose four electrons to become helium electronic configuration. So this is not possible. Carbon cannot lose electrons. Okay, now let us try to understand gaining of electrons. Okay, now it has six protons, six neutrons. It has two orbits, first orbit, 
second orbit and in first orbit we have two electrons in second orbit we have four electrons now you see to remove electron we have to give energy and also to add electron also we need to give energy right okay you see first atomic number is six it got six electrons it got six protons it got six neutrons now okay uh, we are thinking to make this carbon atomic number six to ten right how by adding four electrons now apply some amount of energy to the atom try to add one extra electron first of all you see guys six protons can handle six electrons very effectively efficiently now is it possible for electron to i mean for atom to uh, handle uh, seven protons or something or eight protons what will happen we'll try to understand you see now uh, we have added one extra electron first of all you see this electron what is the charge of electron negative minus right what is the charge of this electron minus what is the charge of this electron it is also minus this is also minus because all electrons are negatively charged particles now if you observe from this electron to this electron there will be equal distance because of force of repulsion like charges will repel isn't it negative charge negative charge if you keep together it will repel right and you see distance from this electron to this electron that is also same and distance from this electron to this electron will be will be same and here also it is same because all electrons are negatively charged and all electrons will be showing force of repulsion on each other so there will be equal distance between all the electrons now you have given some energy you have applied some you have added one electron let us assume now one electron is added guys as soon as adding electron to the orbit automatically all those electrons will align themselves right now all electron should be like uh, it will now from this electron to this electron how much uh, distance is there from here to here also same distance should be there now you see in uh, outermost orbit it got five like one two three four five now equal distances will be there you see when electrons got equal distances now because of force of repulsion now more number of electrons are there now in the orbit now repulsion force also increases when repulsion force increases automatically velocity of an electron also increases previous previously uh, before adding the electron that velocity of electron is quite simple and constant so it will be having its own velocity and it will be revolving around the nucleus as soon as adding extra electron that electron will get more velocity and it uh, velocity increases further okay now you see we have added electron now it has become seven electrons but there is no change in proton and neutron count okay further energy you have added and now you have added another extra electron now it has become eight electrons but proton count six proton and uh, six neutrons you see six protons and six electrons that will be okay six protons can handle six electrons very effectively but it cannot handle seven it cannot handle eight now again after adding extra electron again places will be assigned aligned now further velocity of electron increases when velocity of electron increases it radiates more energy and it loses its energy so it is not possible for us to add okay again you have added some energy you have added another electron and it has become nine electrons at last 10 electrons with only six protons and six neutrons which it is not at all possible for nucleus to handle 10 electrons huge and huge radiation we can observe and here also there will be huge damage for the atom so from this we can get information like carbon cannot gain 10 electrons to become stable like a neon so neither loses nor gains now we'll try to understand how that carbon becomes stable without losing and without gaining then so we have discussed that carbon cannot lose four electrons and it cannot gain four electrons so without losing electron without gaining an electron how it can become stable in the sense first year i have told you there, uh, there are two types of bonds in metals and non-metals we have discussed ionic bond basically what is meant by ionic bond bond formed between two or more elements by transferring of electrons by 
transferring of electrons. Electrons will be transferred from one element to another element. We have seen in third chapter how sodium chloride is formed. Sodium, of course, atomic number is 11. Valency electron, only one. Chlorine, atomic number is 17. Valency, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, sodium will lose one electron because atomic number 11 will become 10. 10 is stable, right? Because 10 is electronic configuration of neon. Now, chlorine, its atomic number 17, it will become 18 by gaining one electron. Sodium will be losing one electron to become 10. Chlorine will be gaining one electron to become 18. And chlorine transfers its electron to sodium. Sodium transfers its electron to chlorine. Now, chlorine will get electron. Now, it will become 18, stable. Sodium lost one electron. It has become 10, stable. Like that, sodium chloride is formed and magnesium chloride also we have seen in third chapter. But carbon cannot lose electron, cannot gain electron. Instead, it will go with sharing of electrons. Sharing of electrons. Sharing of electrons concept is known as covalent bond. In third chapter, we have seen ionic bond. Ionic bond is nothing but transferring of electrons. Covalent bond is nothing but sharing of electrons. You have to remember. Next. Okay. How that uh, sharing that and all happens, we will see. We will try to understand. First, we will see example of hydrogen. So, I have written like H2. What is the meaning of H2 in the sense? Two hydrogen atoms are there. Why two? That we will see. First of all, hydrogen, its atomic number is 1. If right electronic configuration, it is 1s1. Means hydrogen has one orbit and it has only one valency electron. Now we can represent that one as H with one cross mark. You see, one is not stable now. What is the nearest stability number for one means? We can tell it is two, helium. Means hydrogen has to become helium by getting one electron. Now, here there will be another hydrogen with one electron. This hydrogen has one electron. This hydrogen also will have one electron. Right. So, when hydrogen has one electron each, automatically what will happen in the sense, this hydrogen will share its electron with this electron. This hydrogen will share its electron with this hydrogen. Now, both electrons will bond. Bonding in the sense, we can draw a line. Now you see, we have to draw a circle. In this circle, means this circle is representing this hydrogen got one electron from another hydrogen. Now you see, in this circle, how many electrons are there? Two electrons are there. Means it is following duplet rule. There will be two rules, right? Duplet and octet. Duplet means there will be two electrons in outermost orbit. Octet means there will be eight electrons in outermost orbit. But here you have to observe. In these elements, only hydrogen will be going with duplet rule. Remaining all elements will be going with octet rule. Neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon will have eight electrons in its outermost orbit. And in ninth class, we have discussed NS2, NP6. That is the general uh, outermost electronic configuration formula for octet rule, right? But while coming to helium, it is 1s2. That's it. Only helium will have duplet. Neon, organ, krypton, xenon, radon will have octet. Now, while coming to here, hydrogen, this we have drawn one circle. In this circle, hydrogen got two electrons. Two electrons means atomic number two. Hydrogen got attain, hydrogen attained helium electronic configuration. Then hydrogen got stable. Now, this hydrogen will share electron from another hydrogen. Now, if you observe this circle, this circle is also going with duplet rule. This circle duplet, this circle also to duplet. Now, this can be written as H bond H. Guys, whenever I am representing bond, you have to understand at this end, there will be one electron. At this end, there will be another electron. Bond is representing pair. Bond is representing pair of electrons. So like that, hydrogen will get stable. Now in circle, if you observe, hydrogen got two, this hydrogen also got two. Done. Then we got H2 molecule. 
now we'll see formation of o2 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 stands for oxygen oxygen molecule okay first of all oxygen its atomic number is 8 now let us write electronic configuration it is 1s2 2s2 2p4 4 5 6 7 8 if you add these uh, numbers it will become atomic number now to draw electron dot structure we need only outermost orbit right 2s2 2p4 is outermost orbit and we need to draw only outermost electrons right 4 plus 2 6 now oxygen can be represented like this oxygen 1 2 3 4 5 6 so oxygen with six outermost electrons you see one oxygen has six valency now it will be waiting to get electrons eight has to become 10 isn't it because nearest stability number is neon 10 so eight has to become 10 eight has to become 10 in the sense it has to gain two electrons now it will be waiting to become a bond to become stable but no element is readily available then it will bond with another height oxygen now this oxygen has six valence electrons. Of course, this oxygen also will have six valence electrons. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you see what happens. You know, this oxygen will share two electrons from this oxygen. Now you can draw a circle. This circle is representing that these two electrons are with this oxygen. Now you see. Whenever you find a pair, draw one line. Whenever you find pair of electrons, draw one line. Now try to count how many electrons in the circle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Means this outermost orbit has become 8. Now 8 plus 2 that is 10. So this oxygen got stable because it has got two electrons from another oxygen. Now this oxygen also will share two electrons from this oxygen and you can draw a bond i mean circle if you draw a circle now if you count in this circle how many are there one two three four five six seven eight now this oxygen attained octet rule configuration this oxygen attained octet rule configuration now this structure simply we can simplify and we can write it as o double bond o why double bond here you see H single bond H. Why single bond? Because we have only one pair of electrons. Why here we have double bond? Because we have two pair of electrons. That's it. Two pairs we have. Like that. If one pair is sharing, one pair sharing, if you can observe, that is single bond. If you observe, sharing between two pairs, that is double bond. Now, let us understand nitrogen. N2. Nitrogen molecule formation. Nitrogen atomic number is 7. If you write electronic configuration, it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now to draw electron dot structure, we need outermost orbit. That is 2s2, 2p3. We need outermost electrons, 2 plus 3, 5. Now it can be drawn like this. Nitrogen with 5 electrons, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now this nitrogen will combine with another nitrogen with the same five outermost valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five. Now this nitrogen will share three electrons from this nitrogen. You can draw a circle. This circle is representing that all electrons belongs to one nitrogen. Now try to count how many electrons are there in this circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This nitrogen attained octet rule configuration. Now, in this, you see, this circle is representing outermost orbit. In outermost orbit, how many electrons are there? Octet means 8. Means this count has become 8. Now, 8 plus 2, that is 10. It got electronic, it got stable. It got uh, electronic configuration of neon. Then, you see, there is another nitrogen now. This nitrogen also will share three electrons of this nitrogen and you can draw a circle which represents outermost orbit. If you count number of electrons in this outermost orbit, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now this also got 8 electrons that is it is following 
octet rule done like that nitrogen is bonded now we see how many pairs we have we have three pairs right so if you have three pairs what we need to do we need to draw three lines so let us draw three lines first pair second pair third pair let us simplify this diagram and we can mention it as n triple bond n so hydrogen h single bond h hydrogen single bond we can find oxygen double bonds we can find nitrogen triple bonds we can find that is the concept of single double and triple bonds we will try to see a few more examples right formation of co2 molecule carbon dioxide how carbon dioxide is formed let us try to understand you see first of all to draw electron dot structures or something first let us split what are the atoms are there co2 in that we have carbon c and we have oxygen o now carbon's atomic number is 6 oxygen atomic number is 8 uh, carbon if you write electronic configuration it is 1s2 2s2 2p2 outermost orbit 2s2 2p2 outermost electrons 4 electrons now oxygen atomic number 8 electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p4 outermost orbit is 2s2 2p4 and outermost electrons 4 plus 2 6 now what we can do here if you observe the formula it is co2 one carbon two oxygens now first draw carbon like this here how many outermost electrons we have to draw four so it is yesterday if you observe uh, last lecture i have told you if it is carbon if you want to represent uh, electrons it is not only it is not compulsory that you need to represent like this you can represent like this also you can represent like this also right according to the situation according to the bond formation we can represent number of electrons now now you see we can represent like this first electron second electron third electron fourth electron there is no problem in that it is correct only we need to represent four electrons that's it now only one carbon how many oxygens are there two oxygens represent one oxygen here represent another oxygen here now for oxygen how many valence electrons we need to represent six represent like this one two three four five six and for this oxygen also see uh, six uh, valence electrons one two three four five six now you see this oxygen this oxygen will share these two electrons from this carbon draw a circle now after drawing circle Try to see how many electrons are there in this circle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This oxygen attained octet rule configuration. Now, this oxygen will share these two electrons from this carbon. Now, draw a circle. Now, if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This oxygen also attained octet configuration. Not only oxygens, guys, but this carbon also will share oxygen, uh, electrons. Na? Now this carbon will share two electrons from this oxygen, two electrons from this oxygen. Now draw a circle like this. Now try to count how many electrons are there. One in this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This carbon also attained octet rule configuration. Now whenever you find pair of electrons, what we need to do? We need to uh, draw bonds 1, 2, double bond here, 1, 2, double bond here and instead of writing this much, instead of drawing this much diagram, we can simplify this one as O double bond C double bond O. That's it. Quite simple. Now we'll see formation of NH3 which is nothing but ammonia. Ammonia. Now how to draw this one? First of all, we need to split number of atoms. I mean, what are the atoms are present? NH3, we have nitrogen and we have hydrogen. Nitrogen atomic number is 7, hydrogen atomic number is 1. If you write electronic configuration of nitrogen, it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, which is nothing but 2, 4, 5, 6, 7. Outermost orbit is 2s2, 2p3. How many outermost uh, electrons are there? 3 plus 2. 5 electrons we need to draw. Hydrogen atomic number is 1s1. That is only one orbit, that is only last orbit. So that is only we can take it as valency orbit. Now, how many electrons, valence electrons are there? One electron. Now, it is NH3. Na? Okay, first let us represent nitrogen like this. 
for nitrogen how many electrons we need to represent five valency electrons now we can represent like this 1 2 3 4 5 no wrong in it now nitrogen has five valence electrons we have represented it now this hydrogen how many valence electrons one valence electron now hydrogen with one valence electron another hydrogen with one valence electron another hydrogen with one valence electron now what will happen this hydrogen will share this electron from nitrogen and it will attain duplet configuration this hydrogen will get one electron from this nitrogen and it will attain duplet configuration this hydrogen will get another electron from nitrogen and it will attain duplet configuration but this nitrogen is there right this nitrogen will get this electron from this hydrogen this electron from this hydrogen this electron from this hydrogen and we can draw circle which represents outermost orbit where we can find how many electrons 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 now this nitrogen has got octet configuration all hydrogens got duplet configuration either or octet or duplet any one should get or both also can be uh, taken now you see whenever you have pair what we have to do we need to draw bond we can draw one bond here another bond here another bond here this can be further simplified as n here single bond h single bond h single bond h now work for you is to draw structure for h 2 o so try to work on it h 2 o and try to work on ch 4 also H2O is water molecule. CH4 is methane. So try to draw dot structures for water and methane. I'll give you hint: water molecule and uh, uh, methane. Water. I'll write simplified diagram. You try to draw electron dot structure. H2O na. So there should be two hydrogens and one oxygen. So. H single bond O single bond H that is the hint. Try to draw diagram. Now CH four C here single bond H here single bond H single bond H single bond H. This is simplified diagram. Try to draw electron dot structure for water molecule as well as methane. And in next lecture we are going to discuss about next lecture we are going to discuss about tetra. valency and catenation actually i thought of uh, complete completing this tetra valency and catenation in this lecture but here uh, i need to discuss all single double triple bonds so that you can understand whenever you see from now i mean from next lecture onwards we are going with only simplified diagrams only guys only simplified diagrams we are not going to draw this much big electron dot structures clear no need to draw these structures we are going to draw only like this h bond h o double bond o n triple bond n here n bond h like this these we are going to do it so we will try to understand what is tetra valency and what is meant by catenation and uh, what is meant by isomerism isomerism uh, how uh, carbon can be linked as branches chains rings everything that's it in this lecture